Hey guys, Christian Madap Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the July 2021 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it starts off. State two benefits of a partnership for two marks. Okay, so you have many. I'm just going to give you a few. So more capital relative to a sole trader because they have more owners in the business and they will undoubtedly have more capital than just any one person. Work and responsibilities can be shared. So we know that if there are multiple people, as I say, many hands make light work. So they could divide the labor, specialize and get things done faster. And I give an extra one, a bigger pool of knowledge. So most people will not know everything about everything. So that's why working in teams is very important to boost productivity and to help you and help everybody in the team learn from everybody else. Okay, so that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so it says Avril and Bernice formed a partnership with the following agreed to. So this is like the details for their partnership agreement. Interest is to be charged on drawings at a rate of 10% per annum. Okay. Then we have this item here, which says partners are entitled to receive interest on capital at 12% per annum. All right, not bad. Then we have Bernice or Bernis is to receive a salary of 78,000 per annum for holding a managerial position in the partnership. Okay, so Bernice is the only partner getting a salary. So that's an appropriation, not an expense. And the remaining profits and losses are to be shared in the ratio three to two. Okay, so just in case you need it, I have a partnership playlist, which I'm going to put a card for up there and a link to it in the description below. So if you are not too familiar with partnerships, if you're a bit rusty, a bit weak, and you need to shore up your skills, check out those videos and then check back here. Okay, but for the rest of you, let's take a read of the other information in the question. Okay, so it says at 31st May 2021, the following information was extracted from the books of the partnership. Okay, so we have capital account information for Avril and Bernice, 60 and 110,000 respectively. We have current account information. Now, Avril has a debit balance on her current account, which means that there's a deficit on the current account, which means Avril took out, she withdrew more than she earned. Whereas Bernice has a credit balance, which means exactly the opposite. There's a surplus on Bernice's current account, which means that she withdrew less than she earned. She left some in the current account. And the drawings balances are here. So of course, we'll need those to calculate the interest on drawings. And of course, a very important piece of information, net income for the year ended 31st May 2021 was $152,000. And we see that they are asking for us to use the information above to prepare the appropriation account for the year ended 31st May 2021 using the form on page 20. Right? This is the form on page 20. It's seven marks, which means you want to spend about 10 minutes on this question. Okay, let's scroll back up get the information visible and start populating the appropriation account. Okay, so the first thing we're going to put in the appropriation account is the net income. But of course, please don't forget, as I always say, head up your statement properly. The name of the entity, the name of the statement, and the period to which it applies, okay? All right, so net income, or net profit, sorry, before appropriation, 152,000. And to that, we're gonna deal with the interest on drawing. So let's go back across to the information. And we see the first item in this table says that the interest charge on drawings is 10% per annum. And if we scroll down to check out the drawings balance, we're going to see that the drawings balances are 170,000 for Avril and 46,000 for Bernice. So all we have to do across here now is say add interest on drawings. So for Avril, it's 10% of the 17,000, which is 1,700. For Bernice, it's 10% of 46,000, which is 4,600. Adding those two figures together gives us 6,300. And adding that to the net profit before appropriation gives us 158,300. Now we are ready to appropriate the profits. The first thing I like to do is deal with the interest on capital. So let's go back to the table that had the information regarding the interest on capital. And we'll see that it says partners are entitled to receive interest on capital at a rate of 12% per annum. Now, if we scroll down and check out the table that tells us the capital balances, we'll see that Avril has a capital balance of 60,000 and Bernice has a capital balance of 110,000. So all we have to do is put that information in the appropriation account. So Avril, will have interest on capital of 12% of 60,000, which is 7,200. Bernice will have 12% of 110,000, which is 13,002. Adding those together will give us 20,400. Now, if we go back across 
to the table that told us about the salary. Remember, Bernice is the only partner that had a salary of 78,000. So all we're gonna do is plug it inside of here, and we're gonna add the 20,400, the total for the interest on capital, to the 78,000, and that's gonna give us 98,004. That is gonna be deducted from the 158,300 above, and we're gonna see 59,900 is the profit after appropriation. And what do we do with that? We share the remaining profit between the partners. And how do we do that? Well, let's go back to the table that gave us the information. So it says the remaining profits and losses are to be shared in the ratio three to two. What do we do with a three to two ratio? We add the numbers together. Three plus two is five. And you put each number individually over the total. So you have a three-fifths, two-fifths split to Avril and Bernice respectively. So we're gonna go in the appropriation account now. So Avril gets three-fifths of the 59.9, which is, turns out to be 35,940, and Bernice gets the remaining two-fifths, which turns out to be 23,960. Totaling that gives us 59.9, which leaves no profit left well after appropriation because it's all been shared between the partners. Okay, so there was a short part of this question asking state what the opening balance on Avril's current account indicates. So let's go back up and look at Avril's current account. Right, so Avril's current account had a debit balance of 15,000. As I mentioned before, a debit balance on a current account indicates that there is a deficit on the current account. That means that the partner withdrew more than they earned. So they took out more than they earned. So drawings and interest on drawings exceeded all of the earnings, the interest on capital. Well, Avril got no salary, but she also got a share of profit, right? But of course, that would have been for a previous year. Right, so the significance of the balance on the current account is that it is in deficit. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so it says here that Avril and Bernice decided to keep the business's petty cash book on an impress system. And they want us to state two reasons for the creation of a petty cash fund. Okay, honestly, I can only think of one reason really for the creation of a petty cash fund. It is to pay for small, frequently recurring, expenses so that way you don't have to write a check for small expenses now you could also maybe argue that the second possible reason is to pay for unexpected small expenses but long story short the petty cash fund is to pay for small expenses so you don't have to use up your checks to pay for those expenses all right uh, and then i mean i guess maybe if, if they meant to ask what is the point of a petty cash book well of course to keep track of the petty cash fund and so that you do not clutter the major cash book with small frequently recurring entry. Now let's take a look at the actual petty cash book they wanted you to do. Okay, so the last time, according to my records, that they brought petty cash was in 2011. So I guess once every 10 years, they need to bring something if they hadn't brought it. Okay, let's take a read of the information. So we have petty cash information and amount. So June 1st, we have the opening petty cash vote is $200. And during the month of June, the following expenditures were paid from the petty cash fund. So it just says June 3rd to June 29th, so on June 3rd, we had traveling. On June the 9th, we had stationery. June 20th, cleaning products. June 29th, refreshments. And on June 30th, the petty cash fund was restored, which means whatever we spent has to be put back in so we get back to our 200. Okay, so what I did is I recreated the format down here. So as you can see, you have received. So that's like a debit column. You have your date column, your details column. You're supposed to have a voucher number column which shows the petty cash voucher number that's the source document for petty cash the petty cash book sorry you have your total column and you have your analysis column which shows the the frequently recurring expenditures for petty cash uh, that of course well we use petty cash to pay okay so let's just populate this and be done with it so the opening petty cash float as they say here is two hundred dollars so we're going to put that on the debit side, I guess you could say debit column, right? So it says received, so 200. So that's the opening balance brought down, right? Next, we have on the 3rd of June, traveling expense of $50, sorry, yeah, 50. So we put that there. So we put the, the figure 50 in two columns, in the totaling column, total column, sorry, and the traveling column, all right? Next, we have the stationary expense on June the 9th for $35. So we're gonna put that again in the total column and in the stationary column. Following that, we have cleaning products on the 20th of June. So that's gonna go in the cleaning column as well as in the total column, right? One there and one there. And finally, we're gonna have refreshments, $40. So that's, guess what that's gonna go? That's gonna go in the total column right across here as well as the refreshment column. 
Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we total up the columns. So the total expenditure, if you add up all four items, is 145. Now each of these columns will have a total and there's a bit of a cross check built in here. If you add up going across, you're also supposed to get the 145. If you don't, then you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, now it says the balance carried down is $55. How did I get that? Well, I started off with 200. I spent 145. So 200 minus 145 will show me what I'm left with. Right? Now, that's going to give me... Well, you balance it off. You have the same total there. And then it says $55. Now, it also says that we, uh, we reimburse the Petty Cash Fund on the final day, which means that we have to put back the same 145 that we spent. Now, some people might put it beforehand, they might put it up here, right? But I am choosing to put it down here. Again, whichever place you put it, once you have it on the correct date, you should be fine. Okay, right. And again, just a point to note, right? That's what the impressed system is about. It's about maintaining a fixed balance, in this case, $200. And how they do that is how much ever you spend is how much ever you put back. So if you started with 200 and you spent 145, you're going to put back 145 to maintain the 200. All right, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question five in the July 2021 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about any aspect of this item, please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to check out more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for some free PUA hangouts just for you. Okay, guys. So as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.